We need to laugh. We need to smile. Uh, we need to have that joy, amen, that the Bible talks about, and God gives that to us. So we praise God for that. All right. Hey, what about birthdays? Who has a birthday come up this week? Tell the truth and shame the devil, amen. Anyone have a birthday come up this week? Anyone have a birthday? Amen. Are y'all going to be back in time for, for, uh, for Ashley's birthday, or y'all going to be out of town when, when uh, uh, I mean, hers is in March. I'll be back, right? Yeah. The, the Sunday after. Okay, so we'll, we'll catch you in March, okay, girl? All right, so uh, but anyone else will have a birthday coming up this week? Tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. No birthdays? Okay. All right, what about wedding anniversaries? We got any wedding anniversaries coming up this week? Any wedding anniversaries? All right, no wedding anniversary. Who needs a wedding anniversary? <laughs> but now, so uh, we like to sing, and we always say about the birthdays, we want every person to leave here with how many birthdays? Two, amen, not one, amen. That's the day that you're born into this world and the day which you're born again in the God's precious family. So make sure you leave this earth with two birthdays, not one. That won't be any good, okay? Amen. How we? All right, uh, so make sure you remember that uh, and continue to pray. And uh, for each one on our prayer list, uh, the God continues to meet all their needs and uh, and uh, read all the different information uh, uh, this this uh, this uh, Miss Miss uh, Mary Lou put together here. A lot of good stuff in here, man. Well, let me read this verse: First Corinthians eleven, verse one and two. Uh, that's on the left side of the bulletin. If you don't have one, make sure you get one. There's some in the uh, back here in the basket, and some up here too. Uh, but it says, "Be ye follow watch this. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ." Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Amen. Let's make sure that we don't forget about Christ and let's make sure that we are followers of him. Follow him. Follow Christ. And he'll lead us to victory after victory after victory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for all of his blessings. And some of y'all probably already seen it. Uh, we got some blessing outside, you know. Uh, and uh, I, was, I was telling somebody today that uh, Jolene's uh, uh, grandfather, he's going to heaven right now, but it's amazing how God's continuing to use him uh, to bless us uh, even today. Uh, but we got a new vehicle out there, uh, courtesy of Steve Whaley. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, we got us, uh, uh, well, Jolene has a Honda Pilot out there. Amen. And so uh, it's real nice. It's real nice. We praise God for that. And uh, so, so I, I was just thinking about uh, Mr. Joel, that's her, her grandfather, and uh, how God has used him several times throughout the years uh, to be a blessing to our family and to help us. But in the process, also help the church. Amen. So uh, him, by him helping us, that also helps the church and it's helping us get a lot of things done, too, down here. So we praise God for that. Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. Uh, remember, like I said, to pray for all those on the prayer list, pray for each other. Uh, oh, yeah, don't forget, pray for the Whaley family home, too, as well. Uh, yes, uh, today the Green Bay Packers are pre playing the, 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 the <laughs> they are playing the Tampa Buccaneers, and, of course, he's a Buccaneer fan, and, and, and they both die hard. Well, she's really, really die hard. Die hard. Uh, Packer fan, don't don't hold that on against her. Oh, whoa, we got one back in the back. Oh, Lord, have mercy. They they're coming out. They're coming out of the woodworks. Amen. But anyway, so, so <laughs> but anyway, man, amen. Yeah, no problem. Hey, no problem. Amen. So, <laughs> But anyway, so uh, but let's go ahead and pray, amen, and uh, like, like we do every Sunday morning. If you do have a special prayer request, just simply raise your hand, and our God sees our hands on exactly uh, what our needs are. But as musicians play on the instruments, if you want to come this morning and gather on these altars, you can stand, kneel, sit, uh, whatever you need to do. There's plenty of room up here. Uh, but we're going to pray and talk to the Lord for a few moments. Why don't you do that? So as they play on the instruments, you come on. We're going to talk to the Lord and ask God for his blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Help us. Oh, we beg you, Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Yes, sir. Help us. Yes, sir. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Turn to page 341. The song says, What a friend we have in Jesus. He's truly a friend that won't ever turn his back on us. He's with us always. Amen. I don't know about you, but it's good to know that I can put my uh, put myself in the arms of Jesus, and I can find some solace, some peace, uh, peace of mind there. Amen. Uh, well, I'm, I'm excited to have uh, Miss Mary Lou come and sing for us this morning, and uh, so you pray for her. She uh, sings for us, uh, but also uh, be praying for her because uh, uh, this week uh, she's going to be having a surgery done uh, uh, on her on her back, and so be praying for her that she recovers quickly. Amen. And so you do pray for her. I know she'll definitely appreciate that. Amen. Um, I sent a message to Pastor last night asking him if I could sing this song, um, and I said, and I said in the text, um, I would like to give my testimony first. Um, some people here know what my testimony is, but a lot of you don't. Um, I had been one of those good Christian women, you know, who worked in the church, took the kids on outings, did all the stuff I needed to do, and that I thought God wanted me to do, but I never had a strong testimony. 
I never had a God did this mm. moment in my life. Um, because I was saved as a child, I was saved before I ever went through all the nasty teen stuff, early 20 stuff. But um, when I was 40 years old, I had um, a back surgery, and it was supposed to be an easy peasy little operation. And it was. But within a year and a half, I was deathly ill. And um, they decided I had a disease that there was no cure for. And the um, longevity of the disease was two to five years. And they told me that they didn't think I would make two because I was so ill. Um, finally, my family doctor had had enough. I had seen doctors all around here. I had been to Chicago numerous times. And my doctor said, I want to send you up to Mayo Clinic. So they did. Within 15 minutes of me arriving and them starting to examine me, they figured out that that little easy peasy surgery had caused this disease. Mm. Now, it was an incurable disease. However, because I didn't develop it normally, they were able to reverse the damage that had been done, left me with a 24 inch lovely scar down the front of me, but more importantly, I, I laughed and I said, well, here's my testimony. Um, I had been singing this song a few years before I got sick. And at that time, this church was doing bluegrass music. That's all that was ever played. You remember that, <laughs> Billy? And so that was all that was here was bluegrass and hymnal music. And I came to the preacher and I said, I've heard this song and I think that God wants me to sing it. And he said, is it, is it, is it, Glory to God, and I said, yes, it is. He goes, well, then you get up and sing it. And for the longest time, um, I was known around here as the testify lady. And um, <laughs> uh, everywhere I went, that's all, that's all they'd let me sing. So um, usually my granddaughters sing the song with me nowadays, and we call them the get up girls. But um, I want to <laughs> sing this song, and I want you really to listen to what it is because it's all about glorifying God. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Somebody ought to testify. Whoa, somebody ought to testify. Oh, God, I'll live. Oh, God, I'll die. Somebody ought to testify. Somebody ought to testify. Oh, 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 somebody ought to testify Oh, God, I'll live, oh, God, I'll die Somebody ought to testify There's been times in my life when I was down and in despair I got down on my knees and I called to God in prayer Thanked Him for His blessings and named them one by one But most of all, I thank You, Lord, for all You've done Somebody ought to testify. Whoa, somebody ought to testify. Oh, God, I'll live. Oh, God, I'll die. Somebody ought to testify. Well, those Hebrew boys can testify how God took up the heat in that fiery fire. Come here, Daniel, what do you have to say? The lions want me to respond. To testify, oh, 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 somebody ought to testify. For oh, God, I'll live, for oh, God, I'll die. Somebody ought to testify. Tell his goodness, come on and testify. If God's been good to you, you need to testify. Can I get a witness? Get a help. Somebody shout glory. Somebody ought to testify. Whoa, somebody ought to testify. Oh, God, I'll live. Oh, God, I'll die. Somebody ought to testify. Somebody ought to testify. Whoa, somebody ought to testify.
<laughs> oh, my soul. Somebody ought to testify, man. We have a God that's been so good to us. Uh, in spite of us, we failed them many a time. Amen. But he always helps us every step of the way. Man, what a great, great song. Amen. And uh, as she was singing that, I was uh, thinking about uh, Miss Ashley uh, Sampson. Uh, of course, you know, she's been uh, having some uh, surgeries here uh, the last uh, couple of weeks as well. And, uh, and so she's uh, just trying to get some things taken care of. Amen. And so we thank the Lord for that. And uh, I, I didn't know she was going to be here this morning, you know, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to sing this song here. I haven't sung in a while. I'm normally singing with the choir. And so Jolene's been wanting me to sing it. And, uh, you know, but I'm just singing with the choir. Amen. So, uh, but anyway, we found it and they had some background vocals to it. So I'm going to sing it to, uh, to, to today. And uh, this is a song that we, uh, <clears throat> that we sung the first time me and Billy sung this at the hospital that she had the surgery. And uh, that was, she was three, four years old. And uh, the song just says that Jesus is the center of my joy. And I tell you what, when we've got Jesus the center of our joy, oh, man, we got a lot to testify about, amen, uh, because that means in spite of the problems, in spite of the pressures and the pain, you know, Jesus is the center of my joy, and that's why I have joy. Uh, so listen uh, as the song uh, plays, and I hope the song will bless you and encourage you, and uh, listen to the words of the song. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and light when nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shatters all my fears. And when I'm all alone, your hand Oh, 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 Jesus, my joy, all that's good and perfect comes from you. Of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. You're why I find pleasure in the simple things in life you're the music in the meadow holes and the streams the voices of my children my family and my home you're the source and the finish of my highest dreams. Oh, 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 Jesus. 
my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Oh, Jesus, you are, you are the center of my joy. Oh, Jesus, you are, you are the center of my joy. Oh, Jesus, Lord, you are. You are the center, Lord, of my joy. Oh, Jesus. Lord God, you are. You are the center, Lord, of my joy. Oh, Jesus. Lord God, you are. You are the very center, Lord, of my joy. I'm lonely, feeling sad. You are the lifter, Lord, of my head. When those old dark clouds, they come rolling in. I know my Jesus, Lord. I know, I know, I know you'll step right in. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my Joy, 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 my, my, my joy. Thank God that He is the center of our joy, man. Oh, my soul. If you have your Bibles today, uh, let's run quickly and briefly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Amen.
Take your pain as a good pain. Take your affliction as a rebuke. Our worship service has has grown exponentially after that. Amen. Uh, we both have kids in high school. Right? Uh, I was on the way to church today. I, I was so affected. I thought it was church in Kansas City. I was praying. Amen. And, and, and the church is just kind of still just focused on mm. what we do. Yes, sir. We go forth to win. Maybe we win the last game. Amen. I just want to kind of just let you know that this is a day that let's do it faithful. I, I can say from the Lord, we'll do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm sure many of us could say multiple amens to what DJ just said uh, because of various things we've all faced in different areas of our life uh, throughout this, uh, this past year in particular. Uh, some of you, believe it or not, some have had even worse than last year uh, because of certain things that have taken place in their lives. Uh, but it's amazing how God, God gets us through. He gets us through. Uh, and the thing about it is focusing. Amen. And when he, he mentioned that, I'm reminded of, uh, I believe, CT's message about, you know, don't focus on what we don't have. You know, what we've lost, focus on what we do have. What do you have? God can take that little that you have and make much with it. We all know the old, the old saying, little is much when God is in it. But that's the truth, though. It really is. Amen? All right. Let's go over to uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter 15 and uh, verse uh, number 5. We'll read one verse, we'll pray, and then we'll share just a few thoughts with you. And I hope it'll encourage you. Uh, it's amazing how God mm, sets things up. And uh, when he sets it up, man, it works, it works perfectly every single time. Uh, once you've gotten there, if you're able to stand, uh, I'd like you to stand and we'll read one verse, verse 5. We'll pray, and then we'll ask God uh, for his help. Uh, that's 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 5. And remember, our, our theme this year is determined, amen. Uh, even the verse in Scripture, when you walk out the back, make sure you look at that before you leave. Read that Scripture on the back of the door. Uh, we're going to have another one up here uh, for those who go out the side doors, and we'll put one in your car if you need one. Uh, but anyhow, so uh, uh, just to help remind us to be determined uh, to build uh, what the Lord would have us to build. I believe what the Bible says in uh, 1 Kings chapter 15, thank you, Lord, in verse 5. The Bible says, because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, comma here, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. We're going to talk this morning, this simple little thought, determined to overcome failure and sin. Determined to overcome failures in sin. Let's pray. Father, I pray God today that you help all of us to realize we, we failed in some area of life. Uh, we have failed. And it ain't always a sinful situation. We've just failed. But I do pray, God, that you help us to realize that we can overcome the failures uh, that we all have faced in our life and will face in our lives. I pray, God, for just a few moments that your Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. But even though it may be a few moments he speaks to our hearts, I pray, God, it will last, Lord, uh, throughout our lifetime. And for that, God, we'll thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the songs. I thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that were given. Thank you for each one that's gathered here to worship, those who are watching online as well. I pray, God, you feed us all uh, from your word. And for that, God, we'll thank you. That's it for now. But left anything out? Yes, sir. Meet that great need as well. For it's your son that we pray. Father, by the way, if there's anything between you and I that will hinder you from using my vessel, I beg you, I plead with you to forgive me, to cleanse me, and to use me for your honor and for your glory. That's it for now. For it's your son's name we pray. Not a weak Jesus, but mighty Jesus. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Determine uh, to overcome failure in sin. Uh, sometimes we're just not as determined uh, as we need to be, uh, but it's amazing how God will help us, amen. Uh, the word overcome that we're looking at this morning, it means to get the better of, watch it now, in a struggle or conflict. Mm. To get the better of in a struggle or conflict, to conquer, defeat, to prevail over. 
And all of us have certain things in our life that has overcome us. All of us have certain things in our life that has prevailed against us, certain things in our lives uh, that we have struggled with, but yet we've lost the battle. We've lost the conflict with that particular issue. And then sometimes what happens is this. Our flesh will tell us, as well as Satan himself and the demons of hell, but you know what? You failed here. You might as well quit. You might as well give up. You might as well throw in the towel because you failed, not just once, but you have failed numerous times in this particular area. And then you just go, what's the use? Why even try? Why even get motivated to try again when I know probably I'm going to fail? Well, the Lord teaches us that we can overcome our failures. That word failure here, the word itself also means proving unsuccessful or defeat. Let me ask us the question, what, 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 what failure in your life, perhaps this week, is flashing right now in your mind? A particular situation or circumstance, or perhaps an altercation, an interaction, or whatever the case might be, but yet you, you lost it. You lost it. Uh, instead of saying, God bless you, you said other words with his name that you should not say. And then you feel like, you know what, I can't even go to church Sunday. I, I, I blew it. I, I messed up. I said this. I responded in the wrong way. That's almost like saying this. I got sick, so I ain't going to the hospital. I got sick. I'm not going to the doctor to get me some medication to help me with the issues that I'm facing. Wait a minute. The last thing that you and I need to do is to skip going to the place where we can get some healing, get some strength, and get some victory. Don't listen to the enemy. The Bible says that Satan is a father of lies. He initiates the lie. Sometimes we listen to him. And sometimes, if, y'all, if we're all honest, sometimes we know he's talking. <laughs> and we'll be, oh, I don't care. Yeah, you, you sound right right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I need to respond. I mean, there's another voice. If you're saved, there's another voice. That Holy Spirit said, no, that ain't the way to respond. And there can be victory. And as we look in these verses, we realize that we all can overcome failure. And, 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 and no matter what the obstacle might be that we're facing. As a matter of fact, you can write these verses down. We won't go to them right now. Uh, but in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, uh, the Bible teaches us that the Holy Spirit indwells us. And he will help us to overcome but then also the Bible says to us, and we'll read this one. Uh, hold your place here because we're coming back. Uh, but go to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, and the Bible says this. In 1 John 5, in verse number 4, the Bible teaches us something uh, that will help us to overcome the obstacles, uh, the failures uh, that you and I have faced uh, and will face in our life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, he says, For whatsoever, watch it now, is born of God overcometh the world. And this, 1 John 5, and this is the victory that overcometh the world. What is it? Even our faith. Wow. That's why it's so important, brothers and sisters, to have faith. That's why, by the way, it ain't faith in my faith, okay? It's faith in a particular person, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have faith in his word. We trust his word. Why is that? Because the Bible says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And I tell you what, we start to lean on that word, man. It builds our faith. It builds our confidence. Uh, How did David overcome his failures? Go back with me. I just want to share a few things with you real quick, because I want you to notice something. In verse 5, the Bible says, Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as 1, John, uh, 1 Kings 15, verse 5, the Bible says, Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite, David's failure. The Bible gives us all this good stuff about David, how David did that which was right in the eyes, not of man, but in the eyes of the Lord. And the Bible says he turned not aside from anything they commanded him, that he gave him orders to do him all the days of his life, except, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And just to remind us, you know who Uriah was. That was Bathsheba's husband. And if you remember, Uriah was one of the faithful servants, the faithful soldiers of David. 
And David one day, when he should have been out there in battle, when he should have been where King should have been, he stayed back at the house. He goes up on the roof. He sees a woman bathing. He finds out who she is. They tell him that she's a Bathsheba and that she is the, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. That did not stop David. David had her brought to him, and then David impregnates her, and then he sends for a husband to come back from the battle and tries to persuade him to go home to be with his wife in hopes that he'll get with his wife wife, and when they discover that she's pregnant, that Uriah the Hittite would think it was his child and not anyone else's. But here's Uriah the Hittite, a faithful soldier, so wait a minute, I cannot go home and be with my wife when I know that the soldiers are up on the front lines giving their lives up for the kingdom of Israel. He would not go home. Then David decides, I tell you what, I give him a little bit of drink. And then he'll go home. David, that's why, that's why, listen, you go to a business meeting uh, with, with, with a company or whatever the case might be, not church business meeting, uh, but, but with a company or something, why come they want you to drink some wine? So they're just, they're just being uh, kind? <laughs> no. They're trying to dull your senses. <laughs> So that they can persuade you uh, to partake in, what, in what, uh, whatever the endeavor might be that they want you to get involved in. Because when you're all your faculties are right, like, no, I ain't doing that. Uh, I thank the Lord that when I went to get that, we went to get that Honda, I'm glad to Steve waving and say, hey, man, have a little drink. <laughs> He's trying to sell me a car, amen. Hey, amen. He might think about that now. But nonetheless, though, hey, man, he went to that, amen. But you know what? David tried this way back then. And you know what? Uriah still did not go home. So then David gives him a letter, uh, his own death warrant. He had no idea that what was in that letter, he had the king's seal on it, his signet. And uh, uh, Uriah goes and gives it uh, to Joab, and uh, Joab reads it, and it just basically says, kill him. Put him on the front line, let him die. He puts him in the heat of the battle. Uriah dies out there on the battlefield, and he gives his life for Israel. By the way, he never knew his wife was pregnant. He had no idea that he was about to die on purpose. Then David decides now he's going to marry Bathsheba. Everything's going to be good. Then the baby gets sick. Then David mourns. Then the baby dies. Then David rejoices. Somebody said, that was crazy. They asked him, what's up, Dave? They said, well, uh, the baby ain't coming back here. Uh, but I'm going to go where the baby's at. Because he also knew <laughs> that to be absent from the body... <laughs> was to be present with the Lord. That's why when a, when a child passes away, we know we're going to see them because they have not come to that age of accountability to either accept or reject Christ. So we know exactly where they are. There are folks that are here today uh, that have, uh, that have uh, babies that have uh, passed away before they came into this world. We know exactly where they are, and you'll be reun reunited one day. Hallelujah. But this, this was a failure in David's life. It ain't the only failure. Just for us to understand. I could have named a whole bunch of them. I got some written down, but I'm, I'm, for time's sake, I don't want to focus on those. But this failure here stood out. But in spite of this failure, God still blessed David. Why? Now, I know how some of us are. We like the, we like the Philadelphia lawyers. Well, so I can go ahead and do what I want to do, and God is still blessed. Man, we all be good. Hold on. There's a reason why. And I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to show you real quick. Go with me. Uh, mm, go, with you, go with me to Psalm 51, verse 3. Look at Psalm 51, verse 3. The first thing David did in overcoming his failure, in his case, in sin, was to acknowledge, uh-oh, this is going to mess us up, to acknowledge his failure. Mm, not us, but them other folks. They don't want to admit they failed. I didn't fail. I didn't really lose. You know, I mean, it was rigged. Watch what it says here. In Psalm 51, verse number 3, David says something. He acknowledges his failure. David says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. David acknowledges that he failed in that particular area. He, he acknowledges that he failed with, hit, uh, with Uriah. He failed uh, there with Bathsheba. He failed God in this area. How do you know he failed God? Because he says in verse number 4, against thee. The only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, 
that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. David acknowledges that he failed. I wonder will we acknowledge that we failed? Will we admit I failed? I dropped the ball. I blew it. And by the way, you know, uh, uh, DJ just mentioned his testimony, you know, about being strong for his wife and all that. And, and then when she left the house and he was there by himself, and then he just cried out to God, admitting where he was at. I'm ready to go. Beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> I'm ready. And if we're all honest, many of us have felt the same way. I'm ready to check out here. I'm tired of all the mess. I'm tired of all the drama, all the, all the this and that, and blah, 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 blah. I'd rather go home and just watch from up there. Yeah, y'all, it's coming soon. The trumpet's going to sound. Y'all hang in there. <laughs> but that ain't God's design. If you're here today, God has work for us to do. And the way we move forward, number one, is to acknowledge that we have failed. But number two, David did something else. David did something. David accepts. Uh oh, my soul. I, I probably shouldn't say this part here. David accepts his personal. Responsibility for Bob. Listen, the reason, officer, the reason I was speeding is because the people in front of me was going too slow. That's why. I was just trying to get around them. And the officer's like, yeah, but you've been around them for about a mile and a half. <laughs> well, I was just making sure I had enough distance to get back over. Listen. <laughs> But when we come before the Lord, accept my personal response, I did it. They made me cuss. Them kids crazy. <laughs> they made you, huh? They, they, they put the words in there. Yeah, they put them in my mind. Wait a minute. We all have a personal responsibility. But for a long time, especially the last, I say, 20 years in our country, it's been trying to blame everybody else. Don't blame me. I didn't do nothing, you know. I mean, many times, you know, uh, the, the wife says it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the husband's fault. The husband says it's the wife's fault. And, and then if anybody tries to help me, says it's your fault. Amen. <laughs> That's one thing I don't do. I don't tell no. If I talk to you, you me, I know what I'm about to say now. If I've ever talked to you about anything, I don't tell you what to do. <laughs> okay. I tell you what the Bible says to do. I say, well, here's your options, here's your choice. I'm not going to tell you, you know, you need to jack him up. Amen. When he goes to sleep, pop him upside the head with a bat. You know? I mean, uh, that ain't what I'm don't y'all go do that because I ain't say do that. Okay, all right. <laughs> but nonetheless, we see David accepts his personal responsibility. How, where's that at, preacher? Go to Psalm 40 and look at verse number 12. Psalm 40 and look at verse number 12. Psalm 40 and verse number 12. David says this. David says, for innumerable evils have compassed me about. That's why I did it. Wait a minute. He says, mine, personal responsibility, mine iniquities have taken hold uh, upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore, my heart faileth me. David says in this verse, brothers and sisters, he says, they're, they're innumerable. I can't even count the evils, but they're my iniquities. Mine. And by the way, just so we're very clear, that word iniquity is here in this verse. It means perversity, depravity. Now, there's nobody walking around here, uh, I'm sure, saying, I'm so depraved. I'm, the, I'm just a perverse person, you know. You know no, we said, no, nah, you know, I'm, I, I got a good heart. <laughs> okay. My baby got a good heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible tells us the heart is deceitfully wicked. <laughs> the Bible said. The Bible says you can't trust your heart. Well, I'm going to go with my heart. Don't you do that? You go to your heart, man, you're going to be messing up. You better follow not your heart, but the Holy Ghost. Amen. What does the Holy Spirit say? What does he say to When we were doing our men's uh, meeting yesterday, uh, we talked about, one of the things we talked about was boundaries. Uh, we talked about how one of the brothers made this statement. He said, sometimes we, mm, it was good, too. He said, sometimes we have the line laid out where the boundaries at, and we get as close to it as we can. Think about what I just said. We get, I'm not going to step over, get close to it as we can. But then he made the statement that when somebody pushes you, it's easy to fall over to the other side. Mm -mm. 
But if my boundary is right here, but I'm standing over here and somebody pushes me, guess what? I'm still a long way from the boundary line. But I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. But I'm thinking about Christian. She went to work with Jolene one day. It was bring your kid to work day. And, uh, and something like that. But anyhow, uh, so uh, I know, forget, Jolene was telling me what happened, and uh, uh, Christian was behind her. She's about, I don't know, how old was she, baby? About, about five or six years old. And she said, Christian, do not cross this line. They had the line that said, do not cross the line. Jolene walking in front of Christian. Now, y'all ever know my daughter? What do you think she did behind Jolene? Yep, you got it. She walked behind her, and Jolene, she, 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 she peeped back. And as they walked, and Christian went like this. Crossing the line, crossing the line. And a lot of times we try to do that too. But this is where, man, we, we can't touch each other right now. But, but sometimes you know what we do? We, we, we'll cross that line. Some grab a hold of us. And this pulls us on. I thought we will just step over and jump back over. The one time you jump over there and something catches you. And now it has a hold of you. And it ain't going to let you go. And then by the time it does let you go, you're so beat up and broken and, and, and then also ashamed at the same time that now you fall into a deep depression if you're not careful and then you fall into a hole, into a dark place and feel like you don't even deserve to step out. You know what? We have a God that says, I want you to do something. Acknowledge your sin. Accept your personal responsibility. And then do something else. What's that preacher? The Bible shows us over in, in uh, Psalm 32 and verse number one. Psalm 32, verse one. Look what David did. Look what he did. And in, in, in Psalm 32, verse number one, the Bible says this. Not only did David acknowledge his failure, David accepts his personal responsibility. Then David also asked for forgiveness. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. The Bible says in verse number one of Psalm 32, uh, it says a Psalm of David, it's a uh, Meshiel. It says, blessed is he whose transgression is not forgiven. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. It says, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom, unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Watch this. David says, when I kept silence, watch it, my bones, my strength waxed old, began to decay through my roaring all the day long. That's my moaning. For day and night, man, David's transparent, for day and night, thy hand, God's hand, was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. I ain't got no juice. And it's God's hand that is heavy upon me. Uh, that it is burdening me. It is God. Uh, I believe he's convicted him. And you get convicted, woo-wee. You be sweating and, and, and don't really realize why you're sweating. <laughs> the Bible says here, he goes on to say the Selah. Then he says in verse number five. Come on, David. I acknowledge, come on. I acknowledge my sin unto thee. And mine iniquity have I not hid. I've been transparent. I said, would you say, David? I will confess. Woo! I will confess my transgressions unto every person I meet. No. No. He says, I will confess, he says here, my, my, my transgressions unto the Lord. And thou, he says, forgavest the iniquity of my sin. I think I'll rest here. Selah. God, I confessed, and you forgave. You repaired. You restored. You pushed it on the side over there as far as the east is from the west. Sometimes we compare ourselves with other Christians. Say, we know what, so-and-so is going through a tough time. Uh, they're going through a hard time, and they're, they're on Facebook. Uh, they're, uh, they're out there uh, on, uh, on uh, Instagram. Uh, uh, they're out there on Snapchat. Uh, uh, they're out there on, uh, on Twitter, and they're talking about how good God is. Uh, they're not dis the depressed. Uh, uh, they're not feeling low. Uh, they're encouraging us. Man, I wish I was like that, but yet here you are, and you're feeling terrible. You're feeling awful, and you want to tell all, everybody on Facebook and, and, and Instagram and all over social media, I want to quit. I want to quit. Oh, but I can't tell nobody that. I, I can't do that. And now you feel even worse. Because I can't be like them. 
Let me tell you what Christian said to Joylene. <laughs> I got to correct that for the last time I said she said it to me. I thought it was to me, but that was a long story. And Joylene corrected me afterwards. But Joylene was getting ready to speak. It wasn't me. I thought it was me. I'm old. But now, Joylene was about to speak there in South Carolina to, a, to, a, to some ladies. I believe it was about 100 more ladies there. And she was the one that was nervous. She was the one that was afraid. And Christian said to her, in her great wisdom, she said to her mama, just be yourself. Y'all know that's from Aladdin. Y'all can learn some things from Aladdin. He told, he told Aladdin, boy, just be yourself. Let me turn into a bee. Just be yourself. Be who you are. I got to be somebody. I got to be Billy, you know. I mean, Billy sings, he plays the instruments, plays the bass, and he preaches and jumps around and runs. He does all this stuff. I want to be Billy. We got one of those already. We don't need no more. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> and he say amen to me too. Amen. <laughs> be yourself. Be who you are. And by the way, if you're not able to stand up and, and tell everybody, I'm howling, I'm howling and strong, just be honest, man. If you're hurting and somebody's asking you, I'm hurting. Now, now let, me, let me clarify that. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> Some of us, we, we just walk right everywhere. We go to the grocery store. I'm hurting. I'm hurting. Okay. They don't care. Okay. They don't care at all. All right. I'm talking about somebody that cares, amen. Somebody that is concerned. Be honest with them. That person wants to help you. Uh, there be sometimes I go to a person, I say, how you doing? And they say, I'm doing fine. And I look them right in the eye, and they can tell I'm being serious. Say, how you really doing? And they'll look at me. I, I can see them scanning my eyes to see, is he really, really serious? And I've seen people, all of a sudden, tears start coming down their eyes. Because inwardly, they were falling apart. But they was trying to be strong, trying to be outwardly strong. And even trying to be inwardly strong, but actually inside, they were struggling. We folks, that's when my wife goes with me to the doctor. When we go to the doctor, the doctor, how you, how your week been? Been fine. I'm just here for my, uh, just here for my refills. Julie, like you had chest pains on that day and this day. Here's a, here's a whole, whole lot. I forgot. I forgot. Amen. <laughs> You remember me say your head been hurting ever since you've been taking that medication, probably to change that medication. I forgot my head ain't hurting right now, so I forgot. <laughs> and sometimes that's how we come for the Lord. Well, so what do you need? I'm good. <laughs> then we walk away going, man, I ain't got this, I ain't got that. Wait a minute, he asked you what you need. Well, I ain't want to bother God. Some people actually believe they're going to bother God. How do you bother God? How do you bother? Well, I'm just saying, I know God get tired of hearing me. Okay, okay. <laughs> he has given us permission. He says over there in uh, Matthew 11, verse 28, Come unto me, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will run you out of here. <laughs> he says, I will give you rest. I'll refresh you. I'll give you peace. But like David, David, brothers and sisters, David acknowledged his failure. David accepts his personal responsibility. David asked for forgiveness. And the last thing I want to show us is David's advancement. I said all this, said all that to say this. Go back to 1 Kings chapter number 5. Why does the Bible say in verse 5, 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 5, why does the Bible say because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only the matter of what Uriah the Hittite. Why did he even say all that? Because of verses 1 through 4. And verses 1 through 4, the Bible says this. Now in the 18th year of King uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Machiah, the daughter of Absalom, which is actually Absalom. And he woke in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as the heart of David his father. Nevertheless, mm, this is going to help our family right here, y'all. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem? Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Now, this boy did not. And God could have snuffed out the whole lineage of David. 
But God says he might be acting up, but you know what? Because of what David has done, I'm going to continue to bless this lineage, and I might not be able to help him, but I'm going to help the next boy that comes on the scene. Because of David. What are you trying to say? Maybe we can't reach the people, uh, that person who's right here, but maybe our faithfulness will help my grandson. Maybe my faithfulness will help my great-grandson. You, you, you follow where I'm going? It's always right to do right. Always. And God rewards us. And God goes back saying this, but he was a wicked boy here. He reigned for three years, this one being. But the next boy that comes on sin, his son, by the way, God says, you know what? I'm going to bless him because of David, which would have been his great-great-grandfather. Because see, Absalom was his mom's dad. And some believe that was actually her grandfather, which means that was his great-grandfather, which means David being his great-great-grandfather. Y'all remember Absalom? He's the one that said, I'm going to kill your daddy, take your throne. Because who would do something like that? People do that today. You know, mama got all the insurance on us. We get Some of y'all won't tell your kids how much insurance you got on them. Yeah. <laughs> on you, rather, for them. <laughs> they may check. But anyhow, but anyhow, so here is David. Because he did right, God blesses this one's son. And he comes on the scene, and he begins to do a lot of things positively for the kingdom of Judah. What are you saying, preacher? David messed up. David failed. But because David got things right, God continued to bless his lineage down the road, even though there were some that was acting up along the way. But because of his faithfulness. And brothers and sisters, you may fail in a certain area in your life, but don't let that failure be final. Don't just quit. Say, wait a minute, Lord, I failed. Whatever. It might not be a sin. Might be just a failure in itself. I failed here, but Lord, help me to go beyond my failure and to go in faith, trusting you to be that force that gives me victory that will also affect my family and those down the line. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I want to be a blessing, not to me, to others. Be a blessing to others. And one way to be a blessing to others is by doing that which is right. Watch this now in the sight of the Lord. We know about numbers. So sometimes we'll do things, and everybody said, that ain't right. The Lord says, good for me. That's what I want you to do. But that don't make any sense. They're going to pay you $39.50 an hour right here, and you're like, no, I'm going to stay here at the $12.50 job. You're crazy. You lost your mind. You Lulu. <laughs> I don't even know that's a word. But anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> they come and go. But you know what? If the Lord said to you, that's not what I want for you, I don't care how much you pay. That money ain't, if you think money, you think money gonna make you happy? Yeah. Mm -mm. You know what you be doing? You be checking your bank account every night, <laughs> seeing if anybody didn't, didn't mess with your stuff. <laughs> and the Bible tells us, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Solomon that says, you know, uh, I'm, I'm paraphrasing right here, uh, but he says that a man that has a lot of wealth, he can't sleep at night. He worries somebody gonna take it. <laughs> but us, if we ain't got nothing, we gonna sleep. <laughs> We leave our car a lot. Please take it. <laughs> Please. I'm, I mean, I, I give you a little cash again to take it out of here. Listen, but we have a God that wants us to always do right. But what about even our moms and dads are told, don't you be worrying about them kids over there? Yeah, but they getting away with everything. Why come God won't whoop on? You don't know what God's doing. What he ain't doing. Well, I want him to whip somebody because, I mean, I, I'm, listen, hold on. Do what you're supposed to do. Well, what about all the other Christians? They ain't, they ain't, they ain't, they ain't tithing. They ain't, they ain't giving. They ain't helping around the church. See, people, I mean, not, not us, not us, but, 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 but people that work around the church, not here, not here, but people that work around the church, they look up folks who don't work around the church. They're like, you know, really? Oh, you're going to enjoy these benefits? It's getting quiet up in here now. So you, what, you, what, you, what you're saying, just wait, wait a minute, hold on a second. You don't know what they did, what they didn't do. Okay? Well, well, well they ain't been here. <laughs> How you know? Well, they on the cameras. Hold on a second. <laughs> you don't know. 
do what you and I are supposed to do. If I'm right, I'm, I'm about done here. If I'm, I'm my battery's low on my phone. I, I'm, my watch. But if I'm riding down the street and I'm and I'm I'm doing about 80, 82 miles an hour. I'm going down down a uh, 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 94 here, and I'm doing about 82 miles an hour. And then here come Billy. He flies by me. He's doing about 96. And then the police pull me over. Excuse me. His name is Billy Sampson. He lives on Tennessee Avenue. <laughs> Wait a minute. He passed me. He was speeding too. Yeah, I got you. Well, that ain't right. He was doing 95, 96, probably about to hit 100 now. Get him. Sir, were you going over the speed limit? That's beside the point. <laughs> oh, what I'm saying is he was doing faster than me. And that's how we do sometimes. They doing worse than me. <laughs> I don't forget, man. I get to be careful here. But I never get up. I've had some, some, some young, I'll just say some young people that tell me, you know, well, at least I ain't, at least I ain't doing drugs. Oh, well, that makes it okay what you are doing. Because you ain't doing drugs. That's okay. That's all right. Yeah, at least I ain't doing drugs. I mean, at least I ain't, I ain't robbing people. I mean, I probably never had these kind of conversations with people in life, you know. Well, I mean, I mean, at least I ain't doing that. I know, forget when I was in Georgia, uh, a friend of mine I was working with, he said, man, we're going to try to help these guys get off drugs. We're trying to encourage these guys, you know. And I said, well, what y'all do? He said, we saw some guys hanging out in the corner, so we went and got a couple of six-packs of beer, went over there with those guys, sit down and talk with them, you know, how many to give up them drugs and all that kind of stuff. I, I was like, you did what? Well, he said, no, beer's legal. So I guess now, y'all, we can go over to Illinois, <laughs> get your joint, Go on down there and tell them, listen, y'all need to put that cocaine out and, and all this other stuff right here. You know, because this, I mean, this is, this, this is right here. This is legal. That ain't legal yet. You know, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, time out. All right, come on. <laughs> this is not, this is, it's, it's, it's crazy. But that's how we think sometimes. That's why it's so important to always do right. But but they ain't get do you gonna get caught probably. <laughs> they didn't get caught. You gonna you gonna be the one to get caught. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean you you, you, you know, all y'all go over there. I mean, they were, I'm gonna go too, too far here. But I mean, but, but, but a lot of time I with folks and we were doing certain things and, and we'd all be in a group and then and then some of us get caught and others don't get caught. And it's like, well, I wasn't even the one who planned it. <laughs> They planned it. They encouraged it. Come on, y'all. Let's go over here to the, uh, to the truck over here. Uh, that daddy says that we can just go over here and get the truck. We can act like we're breaking into it, get all the food out. Oh, okay. We'll go over there and do that. Okay, but wait a minute. <laughs> that man came out there and said, hey. He had a gun in his hand. We all running. So, wait, I thought he said it was okay. It wasn't okay. If I got shot, I'd be like, man, you said it was okay. <laughs> no, I didn't say it was okay. What are you saying, preacher? I shouldn't have been there in the first place. Y'all going over here doing this? I'm not going. Man, you're a punk. You know, you, you're weak. You ain't got no backbone, yeah? It takes more. Watch this, y'all. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. It takes more strength and courage to do that which is right than it does do that which is wrong. Whole lot more. Whole lot more. And if you think I'm playing, okay, I'm going to give you a test. We're done here. We're done. We're done. I, mean, I got two questions. We're done. We're done. Here's your test. If you go on I-94, the speed limit is 55. Now, let's see how hard it takes you to do 55. So why just went 57? Mm -hmm. I said do 55. It's going to be hard. But you, let's see, you know, you'll be doing 70 in a heartbeat. It's easier to do that. Two questions. We're done. We're done. Determined to overcome failure and sin. Number one, what failure do you need to overcome today? What failure do you need to overcome today? Number two, will you ask sincerely, will you ask God sincerely to help you overcome this failure? Will you ask God sincerely to help you overcome this particular failure? The last was a simple statement. Let's be determined to overcome our failure. Father, thank you for your meaningful blessing. I've tried my best to think about the words you gave it to me. And I do pray, God, that you helped us. I know you helped me as I was studying it. Father, challenged me in certain areas. And I just want to say thank you for that publicly. But then I also pray, God, for my brothers and sisters. 
Perhaps, God, they need to talk to you for a few moments about some things on their mind, on their heart, uh, some things that you revealed to them, that you've shown them. I do pray, God, they come to you, the great physician, uh, to get the spiritual medication they need to have to be victorious in these situations. So perhaps somebody wants to come by and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for how you helped me uh, to overcome the failure that I had in my life. Or perhaps, God, there's folks that you come for other reasons that have nothing to do with this message, not anything to do with this message whatsoever. There's some things they want to talk to you about, maybe even praying for somebody that they love so much, uh, this allowing failure to swallow them up. I uh, pray, God, you give them the right words to say to that person to help them and to encourage them. And we'll thank you. But, Lord, whatever the needs are today, help us, God, to respond. We've heard the songs, we've heard the song, a sermon. Now it's time to respond. What's in your son's name we pray? Not a week, Jesus. No, sir. But mighty Jesus, amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Let me come talk to him for a few moments. Let's come talk to him. Page 137, the red hymnal. Let's all stand. Some are praying. Let me come talk to him today. Maybe we're going to thank him. Uh, maybe pray for somebody. Uh, whatever the case is, let's come talk to him. Because it's just so sweet, the song says, to trust in Jesus. Trust him to help us to overcome our failures, overcome our, our problems, whatever it might be. Page 137, read him, let's sing it together from our hearts. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood from your hearts. Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just a moment. We're going to pray. But before we pray, if you're here this morning, say, Preacher, when you do pray, pray for me as I raise my hand. Just pray for me. Yes, hands all over the building. My hand is up as well. Hands down. Let's go ahead and pray. Matter of fact, one more question. If you're here today and say, Preacher, I'm not sure that I'm saved, would you pray for me that I get that assurance that I need to have? Just simply raise up your hand so I can pray for you. So I can pray for you. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for transparency. Thank you, Lord, for honesty. Thank you, Lord, for the hands that were raised. Mine was raised, too. And, Father, all of our hands that were raised representing a need that we each have. And so I pray, God, that you meet the needs of each of those hands that were raised. I pray, God, you give us victory. I God, give us strength, courage, and direction, our wisdom, whatever is needed, needed for that particular situation. I pray, God, you provide for us that. And, I ha yeah, 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 and give us the courage to follow you, to do what you're showing us to do. And for that, God, we'll thank you. I pray, God, for those who've been watching online, live, and those who'll be watching later. I pray, God, you continue to feed their souls, build their families, build their homes, give them strength for the journey, and help all of us, Lord, continue to spread the good news that Jesus saves, Jesus saves, yes, Jesus saves. And for that, Father, we'll thank you. You've been good to us. Be with all those who came to the altars, Father, my left and my right, for all petitions, thanks, praise, and many other things. I pray, God, you meet those needs as well. All right, that's it for now. If I left anything out, yes, sir, meet that great need as well. What's your son's name? We pray. Not a week, Jesus, but mighty Jesus. Amen. Amen. Maybe see it. Let's sing that last verse together. I'm so glad. Hallelujah. I've learned to trust him. I'm so glad I've learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me. Will be Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace. So one more chorus, one more time from the hearts. Oh, say, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to 
trust him more. Hey, Amen. Glory hand of praise. Amen. I tell you what, it's amazing how some of the lyrics of these songs are so true. Uh, that last part of that little uh, that chorus, it says, uh, it says, uh, it says, uh, oh, for grace to trust him more. And if you and I are honest, we need more grace to trust him that much more. Because sometimes it's, it's easy to trust God in some areas, but in some other areas, man, it's tough. It's rough. But you know what? Ask God for more grace to trust him. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings. Uh, we do have offering plates up front here, and then there's some in the back, uh, so you can give that way. Uh, or if you want to go to giveify.com, I just put it in there, the Sunrise Baptist Church, 116 uh, East 29th Avenue. Uh, put that in there, and it will come up, and you can give that way as well. What, whichever way you choose to give, uh, you can do that, and the Lord will definitely bless your giving. How do you know that? Because that's what he said he'd do. And God keeps his promises. It's amazing how we do our part, and God does his part. It always blows my mind. Amen. So as they play something right now, we we'll give you the opportunity to, uh, to bring your offerings and uh, tithes uh, to, the, to, the, to the Lord, and uh, we'll do that as y'all play. Amen. How are you? All right. <laughs> I know that song. Sister Jackie uh, Brabs, pray for her mom, uh, Donna. Of course, she's uh, she's uh, coming down to the last days of being here, uh, and she's going to be absent in the body and present with the Lord. So continue to pray for Sister Donna. I know she really appreciate that. Uh, we got a chance to go and see her, and we prayed with her, and it's, it was just wonderful. I felt her squeeze my hand, and uh, that just really blessed my soul. Amen. So remember to pray for her, and then also continue to pray uh, for Miss Mary Lou, too. Uh, she'll be having service this week. Just pray for all of us. Amen. Pray for um, uh, for Maddie uh, and her baby. Uh, that's where that's where. Uh, uh, with uh, Dana's at this morning. All right. All right, let's go and pray. Father, thank you for your memory for blessings. Thank you for another time to worship my brothers and sisters. Father, I love this. I love this. I love, Father, drawing strength from one another, encouraging each other, uh, laughing with one another, praying, crying, tears, joy, love, all that good stuff. I just thank you for it. Now I do pray, God, you go with us now and keep us safe as we travel. I do pray, God, we spread the good news that Jesus saves. Help our conversation to be sweet. Help it to be strengthening to others. Help it, God, to build and not to tear down. And with that, Father, we'll thank you, Lord. And then give us a great day on Tuesday. Keep us safe, Father. If I left anything out, yes, sir, take care of that. Billy and his family, they'll be traveling, uh, leaving out at the end of this week. Now keep them safe on the roads as they go spread the good news as well. All right, that's it, Lord. Uh, be with Miss Donna. Uh, watch over her father and her family, and, uh, Jackie and all those there. And we'll thank you for that, too. Mary Lou, the list goes on. All right, that's it for tonight, right, right now. For us, your son's name, we pray, Father. Not a week, Jesus, but mighty Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah,